Hello, everybody. Frankie Day here for Frankie Day Models. Okay, fellas, uh, for the Sunday evening, I have a, a treat for you. This will be video two for my fall fun build of the Airfix under the license NPC 148 scale EA6B Prowler and 148 scale. <coughs> As mentioned in video one, this model is no stranger to you fellas out there. You guys probably built one before, got one in your stash, or thinking about getting one. To me, it's a fun build. It really is. It's it's, it's enjoyable. And uh, it goes together very, very well. Just a very, very a minor slight of fit issues. The only issues I've had, the fit wise, fits pretty good, but the, uh, associated with the fits are these gaps. So you got to use filler for that. You just can't use a sanding stick and sand it down. You can sand it down as close as you can to it. But you want to over sand it, so what you got to do is you got to add a little filler to it. You'll see uh, uh, as I discuss it on the model. <coughs> okay, without further ado, less chatter, more action. We're going to bring the camera down to the to the fowler. As you can see, you got to fill this one I was talking about right here. As long as the air intakes right here. They, 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 they was in a gap. So I, up the top here, I don't want to sand that down flush, bring it over here, you old. You want to do that. You just want to just follow the natural fit that's got to be filled in. No need to put she stuttering there because it, it really isn't that much. Tell you the truth, when I sanded these things down a while ago, it didn't need any filler. I just put some on there anyway. So in these areas right here, they fill very nicely. Everything else is no filler at all. What filler is mostly needed thus far is right out of here. Right in here. These areas right in here. Especially the landing gear well. As a center section of, of this fuselage right here, there's a plate here. It's like that of their um, well, 72nd scale uh, Vulcan bomber. You remember on the NPC kit, not the new tooling one, the old tooling one. You got a selection you either have an open bomb bay, you have a bomb bay, or you have that blue steel. <coughs> I had blue steel on mine. But like I say, just for the I use that as an example that you got to, there's a, there's a, this piece here just fits in here. It fits real good in here, real nice. There's not pretty much a gap here. This is pretty well sanded out. It's good, it's good and flush. I've got my filler in here. It's all filled in good and ready to put some paint on it. I gotta appreciate it first. And stabilizers, there's a, I believe there's a, two pieces to the stabilizers. And you can see the outline of how the filler goes. They were filled in. Just around there. That's about it. I didn't put down the carriage on yet, though, but I will assemble that. It's white. So before I start doing any pre shading on it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, assemble my undercarriage on here. And uh, my ordnance pods and get them on there too, as well. And I'll just go ahead and uh, start doing some pre shading, do some paint. Those get it very quick, very fast, too. I like this kit. There's better ones out there. I think the first company that made it really well was old Fujimi kit. They made an excellent job of that back in 1978 or 79. They presented that in 148 scale. That's a, that's a, that's a dandy of a kit. And uh, I wouldn't mind getting one of those. I see one built up at the Los Angeles Trade Center out there in California when I was out there. So I stationed out there in Long Beach, went to the model show. I see one built up. It was, it was new too. It came to it came to uh, to uh, to release in the hobby shops. This is not a bad kid. Everybody's done a good job on this. The only bad thing really about this, fellas, is the cockpit. The cockpit, you're on your own. If you can't afford photo etch parts, decide not to. Want to try try your hand at uh, scratch detailing. The cockpit of this thing is for you. This camera here, I'm going to pick it up a web camera tomorrow. A, a, a camcorder. Get rid of this hideous webcam. I'm going to bring this prowler up to the webcam close to the show you the cockpit. All those dials I had myself. I had to them out. I'm sorry, guys, this candy does not do justice. But I think you get a good idea. I 
On the instrument panels of the kit, they're already scribed in already. So using the butt end of a toothpick or a, or a prickly tool or take a piece of sprue, what I do sometimes, take a piece of sprue, heat it, you get the thickest piece of the sprue as it points out, cut that and use that for uh, making your instrument panels like that. Because sometimes the toothpicks, they absorb so much paint and really overflow, they'll run. But that's about it. On the side too, I gotta add some seat belts to it before I close that cockpit up. I'll make those out of masking tape. No big whoop there. It goes together quite well, guys. It really truly does. It's a nice kit. It's a dinosaur, but it's a nice kit. It goes together very well. Airfish could have done better, but back in those days, the technology and uh, just getting a kit out there in 148 scale was a challenge for them. And uh, Airfix is really starting to change a little bit. They're starting to venture outside the old the old tooling kits they had. It's starting to bring out some pretty good ones. I'm happy and very blessed that Airfix is still in business today. We've lost a lot of good manufacturers, you know, due to bad management. And, of course, the, the owners of these uh, establishments have deceased. And, and usually the siblings or the, or, the, or the widower or the widower or the widowee or whatever it is has to take over the business and sometimes health get, health issues get in the picture and it causes the companies to founder. That's one reason why Ravel went up and smoked and Ravel Germany took over is because that that the lady uh, I forget the gentleman's name, the founder of Ravel, his wife was running the business for a while. And she started to have health issues and couldn't handle the business any longer. So that's when they closed the doors to Ravel and became Ravel and Monogram. They all, same thing in Monogram. They, they, these are old, old metal manufacturers. These guys were the pioneers of, of styrene as we have today. And they're getting up there in years, fellas, you know. It's like we all are. And when old sales wear out, no great sales things are to wear out a little bit, and it's, uh, it's time to fudge out, you know, and uh, it's always the business. On the uh, filler marks here, the, on the filler here, this is my favorite, this is my buffet stick. I got this at a hobby shop. I, I got that Smitty's hobby shop about five years ago. Boy, I missed that place so bad. Man, do I miss it. Take some water, a little cup of water or something. You dip it in the water, and you give it this. That buff has all the scratches. It's nice and smooth. Cause you want to get all the scratches. That's why I do all my models. I get rid of the scratches. Cause really, it just it defies piss poor craftsmanship if you don't get all your scratches and blemishes out. Got good trained eyeballs. They pick stuff up like that. That's how these judges right there. They uh. They look for stuff like that. I knew a judge one time, Mark Young. He's the head of IPMS on the, the Dayton chapter where I belong to. He says, Frank, well, look, so I, it's not only the finish of the model, it's just, is seems if they're filled correctly, if they're scribed, described, and mostly scratches. Most of the guys that have good models, they do excellent jobs, but they forgot the most important ingredient. They don't get rid of the scratches. To get a buff those scratches out. That's a flaw. There's one guy who, instance, he had a a P39 Air Cobra at 132nd scale. He said, I judged that the guy did a beautiful job on it, not seeing the scratches on there from how he sanded it, didn't take them out. So he lost. So I gave him a third, I gave him a third class, I, I gave him a third, uh, third place trophy. He could have got first class, but that's what caused it. So that's how judges go, guys. They look for stuff like that. They really do, because they got trained eyeballs. And a lot of them are very meticulous, too. They, they oh, that's the wrong color of gray. Oh, that's the wrong color of cockpit color. This is wrong. This is that, you know. And really, you talk about river colors. It makes you want to slap the guy inside his noggin a couple of times, you know. They get very meticulous. Anyway, this is a nice kit. If you fellas got one in your stash, I suggest build it. It's a good kit. Don't be afraid of it. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful jet. They, they, these things were coming in the time I was getting out of the service. And uh, 
its other brother, which is pretty close to this, was the was the uh, intruder, the A6. Again, as I demonstrated in video one, the difference between the E, the the, the Prowler, and the intruder is that you have two extra crew members, and this thing's an electronics package. It's got a windmill type of uh, a missile jammer, a weapons jammer. I guess what these things do when they fly in a mission, these things, uh, they, as they're, they're flying, you probably got F-18 Hornets behind them. And then what they do, they they jam those missiles so they can be able to let the other aircraft come in and let them have it. And uh, do the job. Wipe them out. This is an electronic ship. Some of uses fueling tankers with the Navy. I believe they still use these. If they're still in, I'm quite certain they do. So they're they're not they're gonna get out of, out of the service anyway too soon. This is a real nice kit, fellas. I mean it really truly is. And uh, there's no fit issues at all other than around the, the air intakes. Also the bottom where the plate joins the front of the fuselage and also the aft section where the wing ribs. That's all filled in. I can take a light and look at it like this, see if there's anything I miss. It's pretty well there. It's, all, it's, uh, it's ready to be appreciated in payment. That'll be on the next uh, video. I'll show that. I'll have that done this week. I'll make another video before the final reveal. Okay, now we're going to have some fun, boys. This is the treat. Halloween's over. There's no trick. This is a treat. Well, Frank and Dave don't trick. I always treat. <laughs> okay. We'll get my iced tea out of the way. Get myself organized here because I don't, I don't want no party fouls. I'm talking about my work bench here. I get some good news. I'll get my house by January. I talked to Mr. Ames today. We get the plumbing all done. You got a builder's permit thing inside. So get some of that stuff squared away. I'll be to get in. And then he asked me the sixty-four thousand dollar question. He says, "What are you gonna do with this trailer?" He says, "You gonna let it out or something?" I says, "I said, boy, I really get much thought about that." He goes, "Oh, well, I can make a better decision." He says, "Take it and park it next there." I said, "Will it be all right?" He goes, "Yeah." I go, Jesus, bless your heart, sir. This, you know what this means to me. So, good things to look. And Mrs. Dave would be very proud of me because I'm taking care of myself pretty good. Uh, I know she wouldn't want me to grieve, you know. She didn't have very much conversation to me when she passed because, like I said, fellas, you know, she, uh, she went right for my eyeballs. And they kept her alive, you know, until they get family out there. And she went. But I know she she would say, don't grieve, Frankie. And uh, I won't. I meant a lot my age, you know, guys. I lose my house, lose my wife. Jesus. That caused a guy to commit suicide or have a stroke and die. But I'm strong. I come from a strong generation. You got to take it in the chin. A guy hits you in the face, get up and hit him back and walk away. But, uh, anyway, things are going good for me. I'm very happy. I can thank that man over there on the wall there. Guy, Jesus look at me all the time, you know. He keeps me, keeps me on my toes. He knows I'm happy in the things I do. Okay, now this is the treat time, guys. Enough sentimentalness. Now we get to the business of modeling. Okay, in the beginning, I want to take up from Uncle Sam. Remember me mentioning Uncle Sam on video? Oh, I was in Firehouse Friday. That's Friday. Supposed to have a video falling after that. That never happened. I had to work. Uncle Sam was my brother, my, was my father's first cousin, and uh, 
when I was a little boy growing up, I used to go to this house all the time. See, my dad, before he was, see, my father, <coughs> he was adopted. He never had any parents. He was pretty, him and Uncle Mac were pretty much on their own. <coughs> this is, this is before the second, this is before the First World War and all this stuff was going on. See, my father, he was born 1903. He had me when I was 40. He, he had me when I was first born. He was 40 years old. My father had me. He was a very old man. And, uh, I remember we used to go to, I used to go to this, I called him Uncle Sam. And my dad always called Sam. I thought it was Uncle Sam. Because you're a little kid, you don't know. And he was my Uncle Sam. And I always ventured into the garage. He had a nice little garage one time that could, probably at the time, fit a Model T or a Model A. Very small. A modern day car nowadays would not fit in that garage. A car back in the 1950s would not fit in that garage. A car back in the 1940s would not fit in that car in that garage. A car made back in the 1920s, maybe. I showed you how ancient that place was. I just go in there and I seen all these models. And I seen this one model. It was a tanker truck. It had the Reveal logo on it. It was it was uh, actually it said on the box it was made in 1946. That was a year after Ravel became established as the first modeling uh, injection pot model company in Venice, California. I went to to um, Hobby Lobby to get some more brushes. I, I I love those brushes there. They got some nice brushes. I bought a whole load of brushes here. I bought these the other day. These are nice brushes. I bought a bunch of these. These are nice fellas. Don't be bashful. Go in there and grab uh, you know, for the money. They're cheaper and, and there, and you get just as much as quality there as you would at the hobby shop. So I suggest going there. You guys probably already go there anyway. So I can't tell you something you already know. So anyway, go there and get brushes. That's where I go. It's a bunch of dicks over. I'll poop. I'll find them later. I'll keep these here. Alrighty. I went day in Uncle Sam's garage and I seen that truck by Ravel. This is the Lannis kit. A reboxing of the old 1946 Ravel Classic. This thing here when the box was with box it was in, it was a little bigger than this. And it had Ravel authentic on there. And I thought this thing was really cool. When I seen this thing, I almost had tears in my eyes. I saw this at Hobby Lobby. I said, unbelievable. I can't believe that. That's the truck I saw. I seen Uncle Sam's house. Then my dad caught me looking at this thing. He goes, what are you doing there? Well, I just kind of froze up. And, uh, you want that? I go, yeah. Yes, sir, Dad. Then he goes, I bought that a long time ago. He says, it's yours. Take it home. I never built it, but I took it. I lost it. I don't know where it went to, buddy. But, you know, guys, when I seen, when I seen this fellas, you know, I had to buy it. So, this is 148 scale. I bought four goodies. I haven't bought nothing in a long time, guys. I really haven't. I was on the bus. It's in a bag. This is how big it is. You can see it. The tank, tank truck on there. This is nice. And it's really old, too. I haven't seen the date on there, but this thing is a, actually, it's it's, re, it's a reboxing. See, Atlantis, thank God, somebody out there is unearthing these molds, you know, and, and producing it to us. It's, you know, us, us, old, us old dudes, you know, we like stuff like this. I mean, ancient stuff is stuff we grew up with, you know. This, I think this is a Fruhoff uh, white truck. Also, this is their doing on the Ravel. It didn't have this. There's an option, too. You made it U.S. Army, too. Nothing to it. Just paint it all drab and put U.S. Army on there. 
I really haven't made a review of this kit yet, though. But these will be this will be coming up review probably coming up very shortly before it gets snowy time. This is a good kit, guys. I, this is a this is going to be my sentimental build for my uncle Sam. And uh, it was my dad. See, my dad, he was in the war during, during the of World War Two, World War One, World War Two, and uh, he and uh, he bought a lot of stuff, a lot of models. Then he got a job working in the Navy Department, working on model ships and stuff like that. That's how I learned all my model building from my father. I used to marvel over and watch them build models, you know. And I always questioned, like, uh, like those big old long dockside models. These big old huge jobs are. That are what? Uh, one one half scale to one inch makes a foot. Talking about something twenty foot long, eighteen feet long, twelve foot long, ten feet long, highly detailed. I asked my dad one day. I said, "Sir, how how many how long does it take for one man to build it, for a man to build a model of that size, Dad?" He goes, "Frank, one man knows does not build it. You got five or six guys working on it at once." Oh, no kidding. Well, yeah. You get you got a painter, you got a fitter. You got a jeweler. He works on the fittings like this. You got one guy's a rigger. He rigs. He rigs all the. the he, he rigs all the um, the stanchions on there. And you got inspectors right there that actually were people who worked for the uh, shipyards would, would inspect to see that it's true to the scales of the plans, because these models were built to present to the navy. This is what this can do. And the navy says we want that. We want that class. Give it as much as you can. So, detail was very, very essential back in those days, and very, very important, quite important. Anyway, this is going to be my sentimental bill, fellas. This means a lot to me. It really does. Okay, I got stupid. We all get a little dummy dummy once in a while. I got this. This is a big guy. It's 148 scale. This is the Trumpeter DC-3 in Chinese delivery. I'm not too keen on slope head delivery, but uh, Chinese delivery. But uh, I will do it built like this. That'd be nice that was TWA or Pan America, you know? But I bought this. I, this, this here, I never built the Trumpeter 148 scale DC-3. But the Ravel one I have, I got one that I built for uh, Russell Goslin's uh, D-Day group build. That was about six years ago. And I got another one just like it was the Buzz Buggy, the Monica 148 scale one. So I got that still in the box up there in storage. So I got that locked up. So this is another one here I got. So I decided to get the Trumpeter one. And I looked at the kit and it's pretty good. There's no other decals there but Chinese fellas. So... Right now, I'm debating if I should uh, get me a, some TWA markings on this or uh, Pan American or United Airlines or something. Another thing, too. Well, I'll open this kit up. It's a C-47. It has a, it's got the C-47 cargo door on there. But the, I, I was hoping I'd get the DC-3 with just only the passenger door. But during... Uh, but at the time, in 1935, Donald Douglas first released the DC-3s and everything when they first came out. They had that one door. They had they never had the cargo door after the war. Then after the war, a lot of them were post-World War II goodie birds. And they were back in their, to their civilian deliveries. And they had those uh, cargo doors on there. I remember I threw my TWA. That was my first commercial one. It had that. But it's got the regular oval shape entry door and it folds up the ladders but it's got those cargo doors on the side there they're locked up they don't open up unless they load up cargo in there or something I don't know but just a just a technical note there of observation well I'll make an inbox of you this one get cracking on it I gotta I ain't gonna be cracking on this thing too soon I got a lot of stuff I gotta catch up on okay that's number two down My brother loves engines. He's a good mechanic. He, he's a good electrician. He works on everything, computers, everything. He's very, he's, he's good in his field. I'm good in mine. Fair enough. 
So we went to Hobby Lobby. That's why I bought that Fruit that Fruit White uh, gas a gas truck right there. I went and got this Hobby Lobby. I never built one of these before. Let me tell you something about this. This is an Allison Packard Turbo Jet engine. This they put these on those old P3 Orions, those uh, and those L by 188s, those Lockheed Electras they had. This thing is a, a full functioning motor. I saw H H I uh, uh, hip guys. Uh, excuse me, sir. I don't, I don't mean to slow your channel. I mean, H I guys uh, workshop. He does an interview with this, and he built it. And this thing is beautiful. It works. Right back over here, where my fingers at, there's a little knob there. You turn, and it turns that prop. And right there on the tip of the spinner, when you turn it, it has a differential. It causes the pitch of the blades to feather and also reverse pitch. Just like the real one. This thing is a working model. It's just like the real one. Now, this is the lamp that snakes this one. This is another rebox thing with the old Rodell one. I seen this thing back in 1959. This model came out in 1959. Except the box was then had of course had the Rodell logo on it. But it was motorized. Motorized behind here, behind the the uh, the, the motor They've got, they've got a, uh, this, a little uh, a, thumb, a thumb knob behind the combustion chamber, which turns a prop. But when they did, they had a motor back there. That motor was nestled inside here. And the wire went through there, and you push a button, and the, it would spin. This thing, open it up, I cannot believe it. It's like a brand new pristine mold. No flash. I don't know. This thing's all color. Color plastic. I'll make a, a fast deal here. So I'm going to build this for my brother. He wants me to build this for him. I will do this. There's the instructions. Tell him here. It's all fans up. Like that. Here's all your instructions. This is Ravel text right here, guys. This is how Ravel did it. Here's the parts. Look at that. The only flash, the only trimming where you've got to trim that is where the screws are connected to the part. That's all there is to it. I think it's carefully engineered that way because. Make this thing function, you can't have any flash. This is the oldest flash free model I've ever seen in my whole entire life. And now remember, this thing is over 60 years, this is about 60 years old. There's the uh, black parts in the stand. It's molded in color, it's optional. You could paint this thing up, make it look like the real deal, or just leave it like it is, build that so the kit only paint it. That's what I'm gonna do here. There's all the new parts. All those gears, differentials and things. Lastly, this bag of screws is all silver parts. More stuff coming, fellas. Look at that, it's a piece of papers in that. And here's the decals I give you. They got the four logos on there. It goes on the prop right there. I'm going to be a busy beaver. So that's a fast preview right there. So that's for my brother Michael. I'll build it for him. I'll put it in his room.
number four. I bought this. This is the Tineo 132nd scale F51D Mustang in the Korean version. I was assuming at the time I first bought this thing. It was a brand new kit. They just released this thing. Well, I had an eye-opening experience. I was wrong. This thing must have not been about 10 years. This thing's been out. They make it 148 scale, 178, 72nd scale. Now the whopping 132nd scale. And they make the red tail one. They also make the uh, World War II one too. Well, big delivery. Same kit. All these, all three of those kits they made in 132nd scale are the same thing. They just did deliveries. I haven't opened up this box yet. But we will make an inbox review of this probably one day this week. And uh, it was truly a remarkable kit. From what I can see, it has magnets in there and you can take off those engines. Full, complete Allison uh, Packard, a Packard Merlin engine they use. They give you several decals on it. They give you two liveries. We'll give them that. Now, after watching, I watched about three reviews of this thing. I was really amazed, you know, at the fidelity of, of, of engineering in this kit. The landing gear, <laughs> that's tricky, you know, they... They got a stand right there, and I seen a picture of it on the stand with the gear up. As maybe the gears retractable on this thing. It's a it's a it's a gimmick model like the old monogram one is, but it isn't. Right where those guns are, see those guns are fills on the picture right there in the middle right there, with the inspection panels are open up, service panels are open up there in the engine, and the spare and the spinner laying there. Now, where the gun fairing's at right there, you pull those gun, gun fairings out there, and there's a screw there. It's probably about five-eighths long. And it goes right through the landing gear. So if you want to put this in up flying mode, you just pop off the center uh, landing gear do doors and unscrew those landing gears, pull those oleos out of there, and they got a plate that fits in the bottom of it. And the, uh, Showing that the wheels there there in a retracting position, really crazy, really neat. I think that's nice. If you get tired of it, with the gear down, just unscrew it and put the gear up and uh, get rid of the gear and and slap that bottle plate, put it on the stand here, and you're in business. Here's the I think it gives you two deliveries. That's it, buddy. Actually, three deliveries they give you. Yeah. First delivery is the feature on the box. And the other two liveries are right there. So that's it. That's all I got for this evening. So, uh, today is Tuesday, uh, but probably will. Tomorrow's Monday. I think Tuesday I'll have a, another video on the Fowler. By that time, we should have a lot of painting done on, and the final reveal will be Wednesday. I'll have that done. I'll get it hung up there. And I'll pop back on the day on my beautiful Warthog and start getting the weathering and ordinance all done on that and get that prepared. To hang up or somewhere, and I got the uh, the thoughts going pretty good. I got the flay on there. I haven't joined it yet. That's got to be joined in. And I got one of the wings done. I fit in but like so. It's my card model. Probably work on that. I have a video of that coming up pretty soon. 
I've got the, uh, let's see. Yeah, I got the wings on there. I got the ribs uh, all pre-scored on there. So I got that going. And if I have a video of that, probably pretty soon. I've been working that for a while. Same thing with swordfish. I got that going. So ain't no hurry getting those done. I've been kind of fiddling here, fiddling there. So I want to get this powder done. I'm going to get on the albatross, get that going. I got that all appreciated. All I got to do is to just mask off the de-icers and the borders of the uh, of the, the high visibility uh, glare, the glare panels on the wingtips and the floats and everything. And, and everything else is not ready to go. And I've got that 148 skill to me, uh, Lancaster I got over there. I want to get that thing done. Get it hung up. And then I get pretty much back on these ships again. Get these caught up here. I got plenty of time. Okay, that's about the conclusion of what I got to show you fellas for, for today. So stay, please stay posted uh, for Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll have the prowler. So that'll be it. By Wednesday it'll be all done. And we'll get more stuff coming. Okay, this is Frank with Dave from Frank with Dave Models, and uh, make Mama happy. Take care of the little ones. Stay focused, feed your eyes, spend wisely. And uh, please be aware of your surroundings. And uh, say a prayer we get our country back in shape again and get the free world back in shape again. Say a lot of prayers, guys. A lot of prayers. Okay. This is Frankie Day from Frankie Day Model signing off. We'll catch you guys uh, a couple days, a day or so. Bye, boys. Take care. God bless you all.